Good morning. I'm going to apologize right now because I'm going to sing. And that's probably not going to go well for anybody. Um, I wanted to, uh, I'm covering for Anna because she's coming back from vacation and she said, I'm going to be a little tired if you would be so kind as to step in. I said, all right, sure. The uh, sermon today is Helpless, Helpless, Helpless. It's from a song. There is a town in North Ontario with dreams, comfort, memory to share. And in my mind, I still need a place to go. All my changes were there. I love that song. It's from Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Heather, where's Heather? You're probably too young to know Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, but they were this first super group that came into being. They were, uh, David Crosby was from the Birds, uh, uh, Nash was from the Hollies. They were a super group and they had these beautiful harmonies that they could put together. They played Woodstock. Peggy, Woodstock was this big music festival. You're probably too young to remember. Big music festival in upstate New York where all these people came and this community formed and people sang and danced. It was the, the kind of the preeminent sort of music festival thing that was the thing for that. I probably don't remember. In 1969. Glennis, you're probably too young to remember the music festival culture, but it was this big thing that happened where these communities would form out of nowhere that had folk singers singing and people would dance and they would speak about peace and love and protest the war. And these communities would just exist for the weekend and then they'd break up and go back into their thing. These little instant communities. I'm not so old that I ever saw them, but we had their greatest hits album on cassette and on repeat when I was in my youth group. And that song in particular is from Neil Young, and it's about this community that he grew up in. Um, and it, it's really about how community gets into your bones, how, how the people in the space can change you, how the community can call on you to be something different than what you were, and how you can become helpless to the beauty and grace and spirit and soul of a place and its people. So much so that the changes that are brought on to you change who you were and demand you to be something different than that. And that sometimes that demand for your change, that chasm can be large. You can be comfortable here, but once a community calls you into it and you find yourself helpless to it, what they're asking you to do sometimes is not your place of comfort. And in my mind, I still need a place to go. All my changes were there. And leave me helpless, 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 helpless. Put a pin in that. We'll come back to that song. Let's talk about Peter and Andrew. Two accomplished fishermen. I'm sure they were happy. They were capable. Every day they went out on the Sea of Galilee, mint Galilee, mended their nets, cast it in, did fishing. They knew who they were. Their community was two people in a boat. Solitude, quiet. They knew exactly what their job was. In the morning they'd get up, they'd sail out, they'd cast, they'd bring their fish back. They fed people. What's more honorable than that? I don't understand the translation of those skills to being fishers of men. I don't understand when Jesus calls on them and says, I am asking you to join this community. And they drop their nets and come over here. They were solitude. They, were, they had a small skill. This is what they did. They were good at it. And they were being asked by a rabbi to teach. Solitude was gone. They were going to be in crowds. They had to show people a different way. They had to perform miracles. They had to totally leave their comfort zone. They had to become entirely something different. Jesus turns everything upside down for them. 
You're now fishers of men. I cannot imagine that Peter and Andrew were comfortable with that change. I imagine they wanted to do the thing they were always having done. Imagine that that option was gone for them, though, because they immediately dropped their nets. They had been called into a community they were helpless to. They were helpless in that call. And yet, there's always the desire to be in the comfort. They lay themselves into service in this new community, and they no longer got to choose their destiny. They no longer got to choose their role, and they no longer got to choose what they could be comfortable with. Helpless, helpless, helpless. I've talked before about my little youth group that I grew up in. We were the children of the children of the 60s, which all of our parents, they were, they were uh, professors, they were um, lawyers, they were well-educated people, and they had raised their children to be smart and independent, and they regretted it. Because we, I remember uh, my friend Janet was reading Ibsen at 14. My friend John was reading Nietzsche. I was reading, I read Ralph Waldo Emerson's essay on the nature of communion, where he comes to the point where he leaves his post as a, as a priest, as a pastor, because he couldn't see any reason to continue doing the uh, communion. He didn't see any, anything that supported it. So I stopped taking communion, and then the next week all the other kids stopped taking communion, and that kind of caused a bit of a kerfuffle at our little church. And they drew a circle around me as the ringleader. I'm like, what do you want out of me? I just, we were a challenge. Every time it was time to get a volunteer for the youth group leader, there was just nobody there. Nobody wanted to tackle us because we were, we were a challenge. Uh, I've used the phrase before, the, uh, we were precocious was the word that they would use. But we all knew that was code. Then, but the nice thing about a little church of academics and cerebral people was it draws retired pastors. And one day we got Pastor Neil. Pastor Neil was semi-retired and he had done a lot of stuff. And they said to Pastor Neil, you've done a lot of youth groups, would you like to tackle ours? And Pastor Neil said, yeah. And Pastor Neil was no fooling around. He came in. First Sunday, we ran roughshod over him. Next Sunday, he showed up and assigned Paul Tillich reading to us. And he basically made it clear that if we were going to be a bunch of teenage smarty pants, then we were going to have to live up to that challenge. So we had to read Paul Tillich. We had to read various other things. And I remember one time we were at a, um, we were at an elder, we were at a, a lunch we were putting on for our, uh, one of our other churches. And, uh, and it was one of those, they had a similar to our community room. They had a kitchen and they had the window and they had the people out there. And it was an elderly lunch uh, for the elders in the community. And I volunteered to be the one taking the plates out of the window, taking them out to people because, I mean, I liked talking to, I, you probably wouldn't have guessed this, but I was good with the little old ladies. I was, I was fairly precocious. Um, and uh, I would go out, I'd flirt with the old ladies, I'd talk to the men, we'd, we'd do that, and my friends would cook in there. And at one point, after the meal was done, I was starting to bring the dishes back, and there was kind of a gap, and I was leaning on the window, and that song was playing on the boombox in the kitchen as my friends were cleaning up. And uh, Pastor Neil comes over, and he's got a plate in his hand, and he's got the towel, and he's drying it off, and he says, that's a, that's a good song, you like that song? And I say, yeah, I love this song. And uh, we're getting to the point, with the helpless, helpless, help. and he says, he says to me, you know, um, um, the, they, that song doesn't really work without the four of their voices. And which, which part are you singing? Are you singing the Neil Young part? Or are you singing the, the backing part, the, the part in the background, the, the, the harmonies? And I kind of thought, I said, well, I guess I'm singing the Neil Young part. He says, yeah, a lot of people like to sing the melody. He says, but you know, in order for the melody to work, you've got to have people singing in the harmony. And he kind of waves vaguely into the kitchen where all of my friends are cleaning pots and cleaning plates. And he says, see, we're in here singing the harmony. 
you're out there singing the melody. And I think he's trying to make a point. I'm not sure if I know what it is. And I look in there and I look out there and I see all the plates and I say, well, Pastor Neil, somebody's got to serve. He gets that weird crooked smile on his face like he just sprung his little trap and he says, you know, somebody's got to serve. Truer words were never spoken, my young friend, and wanders back in there with his plate. Pastor Neil. I was here about a month ago, and we were doing blackberry cleaning. And, um, you know, there were, it was a work day, Janet. We probably had 15, 16 people down there in the, the ravine cleaning blackberries. I hate cleaning blackberries. Scratch my arms. You know what I'm comfortable with? I'm comfortable riding that lawnmower. I made the joke to Mary that I'm just going to ride the lawnmower around making sure I can, I'll cut whatever grass there is until you run out of blackberries. It's not really our calling though, is it? I mean, somebody's got to serve the plate, somebody's got to do the lawnmower, but somebody's got to fish, but we've got to do the other stuff too. Got to get the blackberry scratches. Got to do the hard stuff. Pastor Anna just came back from Washington, and she did some hard stuff. We've got to do some hard stuff, too. I look at our church leadership, and I think a lot of people look a lot like me. It's time for that to change, but that's hard. We may not be comfortable with that change. We did a night strike event the other day, and I'll be honest with you. We had a lot of stuff going on, Virginia and I, and I kept saying, have we signed up? Hold off signing up. We may have some stuff to do. Hold off, hold off, hold off. And then we got to the day before, and I was kind of relieved when I found that it was full. Didn't need me after all. Somebody's got to serve. Can't be just always fishing. I think that's true for a lot of people. I think the lesson that I want to pass on today, and, and I'm hoping that I do this here, is, is not to challenge anybody to say we're not doing enough, because I think we do a lot. I want to challenge you to get out of your comfort. I want to challenge you to say that there are bridges with people under them that need love. There are church structures that are in flux, and we need to be a part of that change. There are a thousand little things we do in our community and a thousand more that we might want to think about doing. All my changes were there. Leave me helpless, 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 helpless. Helpless, 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 helpless. We've been called into a community. We can put ourselves and be helpless in front of that community. We've been called to be something different than what we are, to walk in grace. We've been called to be the sacrifice that Jesus calls us to be. We've got to find a way to do that. Sometimes we've got to find a way to do that without being comfortable. Amen.